Hey there, in this tutorial we're going to learn about server client networking in GameMaker. For this tutorial we'll create a basic 2 player example with movement. And before watching this video, make sure you watch my video on buffers if you're not familiar with them. Now for making a multiplayer game in GameMaker you need a server and a client. So there are two ways of handling this. One is where you have a dedicated server hosted somewhere and your players are the clients. They connect to the server and then they can play with other players. The other way is making it so that one of the players is the server. So the first player hosts the server and the other players connect to it as clients. So this is the method that we're going to use in this tutorial as it's easier and faster to make. So basically each player creates a socket when the game is started. A socket is where you send data for the other player to read it. So one player will have the server socket and the other player will have the client socket. I'm gonna have to divide this video into two. The first part is this video we will set up a simple server client connection. And in the next part which will be my next video will implement player movement. And after that I may or may not make more parts. So let's get to it. Here I have an empty project with only a player sprite. I'll go to rooms and rename the first room to RM menu. So this will be the menu room. I'll open it. I'll change its size to 640 by 480. Now I'll duplicate this room and name the new one RM game. So this will be the room where the game will start. Now I'll click on the background layer and change the background's color. This way we'll easily be able to tell when the room has changed. Now we need to make it so that when we run the game it opens two windows instead of one. We'll need that if you want to test a multiplayer game. So for that you need to download the execute shell extension by Samuel Venable. So add it to your account and you should see it in your library. And there it is. So you'll need to download it and then you can import it. For this you only need to import the included files and the scripts. Now we need to create our own script to open two windows using the extension. So I'll go to scripts and create a script called open two windows. Here I'll add this. This block is for the first window and this one is for the second window. Using the execute shell function it runs the game again but this time it adds some extra parameters to it. Then it sets the windows caption to p1 and then changes its position. Then for the second window it sets the caption to p2 and changes the windows position. Now I'll go to objects and create one named O controller. I'll open the menu room and add it there. Now I'll go to the object and mark it as persistent. So when the room changes this instance will not be destroyed. Now I'll add the create event here. Here I'll run the open two windows script. Now I'll run the game and you can see that it opens two windows. Now let's start with the networking code. So in the create event I'll add this. I'm running randomize here because we're going to use random functions and we don't want them to always be the same. Then this is the IP for the server which the clients will use. This IP just points to your own computer. And this is the port for the server socket. This variable shows whether the current player is the server. If it's false it means that they are a client. Now let's add the draw event and add some code here. If the room is the menu room it's going to draw a string. That string just says that you have to press space to host a server and press enter to join one. So we have a really basic interface here. Now I'll add the step event. This is where we'll take the input to create a server or join one. So I'll add this here. First of all all of this code will only run if the room is the menu room. Here it checks if the space key is pressed which will host a new server. Then we run this to create a server. This function as the name says creates a server on your computer. This is the server's type so we're gonna go with the TCP server. There are mainly two types of servers you can create in GameMaker, TCP and UDP. TCP is easier to use and manages a lot of stuff for you behind the scenes where UDP is harder and you have to do a lot of stuff yourself. And UDP is faster but TCP should work fine for most GameMaker games. Then you have the server port and the maximum number of clients that can connect to the server. The server socket's ID is stored in this variable. If the server's ID is smaller than 0 it means that the server could not be created. So in that case it's going to show you an error. But if the server was created the room will change to RM game. 
and since this player is now hosting a server, the variable is server is set to true. Here it checks if the player has pressed enter, which creates a client socket. So using this function, we'll create a simple TCP socket. We are storing this socket's ID in a variable called server because this socket will be used to communicate with the server. Then we use the network connect function to connect to the server. So this is the socket that will be used for the connection and these are the IP and the port for the server. The result of the function will be stored in this local variable. If it fails, it's going to be smaller than zero, so in that case it shows an error. But if it works, it changes the room to RM game. Now I'll run the game. In the first window, I'll create a server by pressing space. In the second window, I'm going to connect to the server by hitting enter. So both the server and the client are working. The first window's output is shown here. That window in our case is the server. So you can see here that the server got a new client connection. Now I'll head to the objects and create O player. I'll set the sprite. I'll add the create event and add this here. This is the movement speed of the player. This variable stores whether the player instance is a local player. Instances that belong to other players are not local. And this stores the ID of the player which will be used to identify it across multiple systems. Now I'll add the draw event and add some code here. This draws the player instance. Then this sets the draw color to black, draws the player ID at the player's XY position and resets the draw color to white. Now I'll head to O controller and open its create event. Here I'll add this. In this enum we have two members, init data and player update. You can use enums like this and they just return their index value. So here init data is 0 and player update is 1. So this enum will be used to identify the buffers that are sent between the players. And this is a DS list for the server that will store all the client's socket IDs. Now I'll add the cleanup event and add this here. So this will delete the client's list on cleanup. And now I'm gonna add the room start event. I'll add this here. This code only runs if the current room is the game room, so it will run when the game room starts. This creates a player instance at a random position. Then this sets that instance's player ID to zero. So this is a local player. And if this player is the server, it adds itself to the client's list as minus one. Now I'll click on add event, go to the asynchronous events, and here select the async networking event. I'll add this here. This event receives all the networking events. So if a player connects to your server, or if a player sends you some data, all of it will be received here. First of all, it gets the type of the async event from the async load DS map. This map basically has all the information about the event. If the type is network type connect, which means that a player has connected to your server, it runs this code. This gets the client's socket ID from the async load map. Now we need to let that player know that the connection was accepted and how many players the server already has. So this creates a 2 byte buffer for sending that info. First it writes an 8 bit integer which is in the data from the data enum. So this way when a client receives a buffer, they can read the first byte of the buffer and identify what kind of buffer they have received. Then it writes another 8 bit integer which is the size of the client's list. So that tells how many players the server already has. Then it uses network send packet to send the buffer to the client. So this is the socket that will receive the buffer, this is the buffer to be sent, and this is the size of the buffer. Then the buffer is deleted because we no longer need it. Then we need to create a player instance for the new client, so it creates one at a random position in the room. Its player ID is set to the size of the client's list. Then its is local variable is set to false because this is not a local player. And then that client's socket is added to the client's list. Now this part deals with the data that is received. So it checks if the type is network type data. If it is, it gets the received buffer from the map. Then it seeks to the start of that buffer. Then it reads the first byte of the buffer to get the data type. If the type is any data, it runs this code. This gets the number of players there are in the server. Then this sets the player's player ID to the client's count just like the server did. Then it runs a for loop to create instances for the other players. Their player IDs are set to the loops index and their is local variables are set to false. So now all of this should simply create the player instances in both windows. So I'll run the game. I'll hit space here to create a server and you can see the player instance. I'll hit enter here to create a client connection and you can see that both windows now have two players. You can also see their player IDs. So that's it for this part and we'll continue it in my next video. So make sure you subscribe to catch it and my future videos and I'll see you in the next one.